afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hopkinton Middle School for Hopkinton Middle School football on HCAM. Tom Nappy on the call. John Ritz, our cameraman, as the one and two hillers take on Millis today. And the coin toss was won by Hopkinton. They deferred. They will kick off to the Millis Mohawks. Hillers have had a good season so far. They had a terrific game last week over at Ashland Middle School. It resulted in a 28-20 Ashland victory, but it was a very well-played game by both teams. And there's certainly a lot of good talent for the Hillers here at this level. As the kickoff's going to sail to the 25-yard line, pretty good kickoff there, and Shea Ferentino on the return. He's pushed out of bounds. So the Mohawks are going to start at their own 35. So today we're looking at some future TVL rivals. Of course, Millis at the high school level in the TVL small, the Hillers in the TVL large. So you likely won't get a Hopkinton Millis matchup, but every now and then they'll put a large school against a small school. As the Mohawks will huddle up and get set to go. Millis Mohawks are going to be led by quarterback Adam Hart. And he's going to line it up with a back to either side. Receiver spread out to his left. Hillers had a number of players in the box, but they'll lay off the blitz and bring Shea Ferentino down after a short gain. That'll bring up second down for the Mohawks. Gain of about one there for Ferentino. At this level, it's really about getting everybody in the game and trying to develop your players. And watching this Hillers team the last few weeks, they've certainly developed nicely. They're getting better and better every game as Adam Hart, the quarterback, going to line it up with a back to either side. Hart takes a low snap and fumbles it. And it's immediately covered up by Austin Merkin that is going to be a loss of yardage for the Mohawks, but a loss of five there. So that'll bring up third and about 14 to go. A nice day for football on this Wednesday afternoon. Temperatures in the low 60s, high 50s, but certainly perfect football conditions. As the Mohawks are now going to line it up out of the eye. Receiver spread to the left side. And it's attempted run there and a nice job by the Hillers defensive line. Making an impressive stop. And that is going to bring up fourth down as the Hillers force Millis three and out. Mohawks gonna get set to punt it away is Robert Lischer on the defensive stop. Actually, the Hillers recovered a fumble there. There was a fumble on the play, and it looks like Hopkinton recovered. So the Hillers offense is going to come out and have very good field position. Hillers will have the ball at the Millis 32-yard line. So a nice fumble recovery there for Hopkinton. Hiller's set to go, three receivers spread to the far side. And the quarterback for the Hillers will uh, try to get you the name of him. He's not listed on the roster. Actually, it's Wyatt Stevens out there as the quarterback. And it's a huge loss. And Stevens backpedal looked like he was trying to roll into the flats and ended up being brought down for a big loss all the way back at the 45. So that brings up second down for the Hillers. And about 23 yards to go. Oh, 
Wyatt Stevens out of eighth grade in at quarterback. He's gonna line it up out of the gun, back to his left. Two receivers to the near side, he'll pitch it. And it's going to be a sweep to the near side. Not much of a gain there. Nice job by the Mohawks defense on the carry. It was Will Masterson. It'll bring up third down for the Hillers. And they're marked right back at the 45, so no gain. Third and about 23 to go. We'll see if the Hillers try to pass here as they need to make up some big yardage. We've seen Wyatt Stevens throw before, certainly has a good arm. Two receivers either side, he's back to pass. He's gonna air it out to his right, and it is just a little bit too far in front of his intended target, Paul Lisher. Incomplete pass, that brings up fourth down, and the Hillers are gonna punt it away, try to pin Millis back. Well, it was a nice pass by Wyatt Stevens, but Lisher could not catch up to it. A little bit too far out in front. Back to return for the Mohawks at Shea Ferentino. Punting it away for Hopkinton, it's Isaiah Curuvilla. Takes the snap, gets the punt away, pretty good one. Back to the 25 it goes, and it'll take a Hiller's roll to about the 23. Nicely done on the punt. So the Mohawks offense will come back out, hoping for some more success than they had on the last drive. Good turnout here today at Field One. A whole lot of parents taking in the action. Certainly a nice day to come out and check out some football. Sun trying to peek out. It's been cloudy the last couple of days with heavy rain yesterday, but field ready to go. Seems uh, pretty dry out there. And the Mohawks offense is ready to go. Adam Hart lining up with a back to either side. Receiver spread out to the left. Now moving to the slot, that's Austin Merkin. And it is going to be a handoff and a small gain. I'll bring up second down. Actually, looks like they might got him for a small loss, so second and about 11 to go. So Adam Hart will gather up his offense and get set to go. Hart will line it up with a wishbone backfield. And a receiver to the near side. Takes a snap, he'll hand it off to the right back and the Hillers defensive line making another impressive stop. Shea Ferentino try to take it. it. Looks like that was Brendan McGowan who got to him. So another small loss for Millis. That brings up third down. They are marked back at their own 18. For the first down, they gotta get to the 33. Third and 15 for the Mohawks. To line it up with a wishbone backfield once again and a receiver to the near side. Quarterback Adam Hart set to take the snap. He'll pitch it to the left back. And it's a sweep to the near side. That won't get very far. And on the carry there, that was Austin Merkin. Great wrap and tackle by Andrew Budden. And the Hillers defense comes through again. It's kind of looking like what the Hillers high school defense does. More defensive talent coming up through the ranks for the Hillers. Brings up fourth down for the Mohawks. They'll get set to punt it away. 
Back to receive for the Hillers is Wyatt Stevens. Snap, and the kick gets blocked, and it is loose deep in Millis territory. There is a flag. Yeah, it looks like we might get too many men on the field. So a little miscommunication there. And that'll be against the Hillers, so Millis will get to re-kick. And they will get to move up five yards as well. Kicking for Millis, Austin Merkin. White Stevens back to return. Snap and the kick nearly blocked again. And he did get it away. It'll take a Millis roll into Hiller's territory and out of bounds along the near side. So we'll see where the official marks it. Well, so far a nice defensive battle between these two TVL middle school teams. Ball is going to be marked at about the 42 for Hopkinton. We're in the first quarter, scoreless between Millis and the Hillers. Hillers offense out for their second time today. Last Wednesday, Hopkinton and Ashland had a Pretty good shootout over at Ashland Middle School. Very good game. Ashland ended up coming out on top, 28 to 20, but both quarterbacks got to show off the arm a bit. They both had some very good passes. White Stevens is gonna pitch it, and the Millis defense is going to make a stop for a loss. On the carry that time for Hopkinton, that was Christian Pereira. So that'll bring up second down for the Hillers. Ball marked back at the 35. So it was a loss of five on the carry. White Stevens huddles up his offense. We'll see what the Hillers have in store here. He's gonna line it up out of the gun. Two receivers either side, looks like he fumbled, and then he picks it up, fumbles again, and Millis has the football. A big fumble recovery there for the Mohawks. And on the fumble recovery for Millis, that was Bryson Mustard. Bryce and Mustard, the lineman, getting to the quarterback, Wyatt Stevens, and able to, I think he got a hand in there to knock it out of his hand after Stevens picked it up. So the Mohawks have the ball deep in Hiller's territory. They're gonna start at the 30 for this drive. Now we'll see if the offense can get something going here. Adam Hart lined up under center. Wishbone backfield, and he will hand this one off and a stop for a loss. That was Isaiah Curuvilla bringing down the ball carrier. And Austin Merkin was on the carry. And that looks like the end of the quarter, or is a timeout rather, so we'll keep things uh, right here and talk about this game so far. It's been a pretty good defensive battle between these two teams. And both defenses have forced turnovers. Millis defense able to recover a fumble in Hopkinton territory. They have an opportunity here, but the last play before the timeout stopped for a five yard loss.
Hillers have a couple more home games coming up, and Lampkinton Middle School pretty lucky. They get a good slate of home games for their first season having a middle school team. They have five home games in total out of the eight they play. Certainly uh, not having to travel too much will help. As Adam Hart huddles up the Mohawks offense and we are ready to go. Wishbone backfield, the receiver to the near side is Jack Scary. Ellis hasn't had much success on the run, so maybe they'll try to throw. Nope, it's a handoff, and this time it is going to be a gain as Austin Merkin able to find a gap. He is brought down inside the first down marker. Looks like that first down marker right around the 20. And they mark him at about the 26, 27, I want to say. It is third down for Millis. But you're deep in Hiller's territory, so you got probably two chances here to try to keep this drive going. Adam Hart going to line it up out of the gun with Shea Ferentino to his right. He'll pitch it over to Ferentino, and Ferentino tripped up a little bit and then brought down for a loss. Good defensive play by Jacob Potis getting right in there and taking advantage of the little trip up by Ferentino. And that brings up fourth down for Millis. So we'll see if they try to go to the air here. Ball is marked at about the 32. So it was a loss of about five on that last play. Hart under center, Ferentino in the backfield. And he will hand it off, a run up the middle. Does it get very far? The Hillers defense ready for it. And that's going to be a turnover on downs. And it looks like that is the end of the first quarter. So the second quarter is coming up next. We're scoreless between Millis and Hopkinton on HCAM. So what are the signs of an opioid overdose? And how can I recognize that somebody is experiencing one? Well, they're actually pretty easy to spot. A person who is experiencing an overdose may appear confused and have a decreased level of consciousness and alertness. They also may have constricted pupils. When you see somebody who's experiencing an overdose, the number one most important thing to do first is to call 911. Next, do rescue breathing. And finally, take out your naloxone kit and administer the naloxone. Naloxone comes in an easy to use package with instructions for how to use it. Each box of naloxone may look different. They're all very easy to use and you do not need medical training in order to use it. So who should have nasal naloxone? Well, everybody should have it to help a loved one who may be suffering from a substance abuse disorder or just to help a stranger in need. Obtaining naloxone is easy. You can obtain it from your doctor, from a pharmacy standing order, or from any of the Department of Public Health sites. By just following these simple steps, you might just be able to save a life. Right now, you're taking a look at the Hopkinton Hillers varsity team as they are getting ready for the Holliston Panthers. They'll take on Holliston this coming Friday at Holliston High School. And we will have that game for you on HCAM. But we are ready for the second quarter here at the middle school game. We're scoreless between Millis and Hopkinton. Tom Naffy, happy to be with you on this nice Wednesday afternoon. John Ritz on camera. And Hiller's offense back out after a very nice defensive stand. Wyatt Stevens remains in the game as the quarterback. And we are ready to go. He's going to pitch it to his left and a run up the far sideline for a nice sizable gain, nearly breaking free was Will Masterson. And Masterson eluded a couple tacklers and was able to continue on down the far sideline for a nice pickup. That's very close to the first down, about 
We'll mark him back about three yards shy. So it'll bring up second and three for the Hillers. Masterson showing off the wheels there. Wyatt Stevens comes back out to his offensive huddle. The Hillers certainly uh, have gained some versatility in offense as the season has go, gone on. They showed off a pretty good passing game as well as running game last week. Low snap here though, and Steven's gonna pick it up. He's gonna run with it, and then he's tripped up. And actually, he might've got a little gain out of that, but it was a nice heads up play by Stevens. It was a low snap, but he picks it right up and runs forward, get what you can. Gain of about one there, so they'll bring up third and two for the Hillers. Actually third and about a yard and a half. Looks like that first down marker is marked just past the 40. So I'd say here the Hiller is likely gonna try to run the ball and pick up enough for the first down. It is going to be Stevens with the speedy Will Masterson who is left. Three receivers on the near side. Stevens is gonna keep it, here he goes. And he is going to take it up the near sideline and be pushed out of bounds at around midfield. A good gain there and certainly enough for the first down. Austin Merkin dragging him out of bounds. Hillers will huddle up, talk things over. It'll be Stevens with Masterson to his left, two receivers either side. Look, looking to his left under pressure and he is going to get it over to Masterson. Just kind of threw it up and now Masterson fumbles Along the far sideline, did the Hillers recover? Let's see what the official says. And it looks like the Hillers, I believe, will keep it. And Andrew Budden, I believe, is the one who was able to recover it. So the Hillers will keep the ball and be pretty close to a first down. That was a great play there by Stevens. Was under defensive pressure and just kind of saw Masterson sitting in front of him and a little scoop pass to get it over to Masterson. Stevens is going to line up with Masterson, who's left once again. He's going to throw up the middle, and that's a beauty. Hauled in and down the far sideline, leaping over defenders and into the end zone goes Isaiah Caruvilla. Touchdown, Hopkinton. And look at that, the sun coming out right as the Hillers score. As pointed out by our cameraman, John Ritz. I think it's a sign. So Wyatt Stevens to Isaiah Curvilla. That was about a 40 yard touchdown if I'm not mistaken. And it looks like the Hillers are gonna go for two here. Let's see what they do. They are indeed gonna line up to go for two. Stevens with Masterson who's left, three receivers to the near side. And he tries to throw up the middle and that's hauled in. Two point conversion is good. And again, it is the Stevens Crew Villa connection. They connect on the touchdown, and now they connect on the two-point conversion. 8 nothing Hopkinton here in the second quarter. That was a nice offensive drive by the Hillers.
So Hopkinton will get set for the kickoff. After a very nice offensive drive, resulting in a touchdown pass from Wyatt Stevens to Isaiah Caruvilla and a successful two-point conversion. Set to kick it away for the Hillers. Is an unlisted number 80, and it is up the far side and returned for a few yards. Mohawks offense will come back out and see if they can respond. And did the Hillers recover? It looks like they did. Wow, there was a fumble on the return, and it appears Wyatt Stevens was able to recover. So it is Hopkinton's ball. Well, the Hillers certainly have all the momentum swinging in their favor right now. It'll be White Stevens staying in there as the quarterback. And I would look out for Stevens the Curve Villa once again. They seem to be developing quite a connection be the next uh, Ryan Kelleher Will Abbott connection at the high school level. Out of the gun, takes the snap, under pressure, is going to roll to his left and has some room in front of him. Here he goes up the far sideline and he's pushed out of bounds inside the 20. It looks like they're going to put him right around the 10, so a sizable gain there. Well, that's the dangerous thing about trying to uh, bring Wyatt Stevens down in the backfield. He has a whole lot of speed, and if you leave any open field in front of him, he is going to take advantage of it. So it is going to be first and goal for the Hillers. Of course, from our angle, not the easiest to see exactly what yard line the ball is at, but it is inside the 10. Actually, they got the markers up, so it looks like maybe just outside the 10. So we'll say it's at the 11, first and 10 from the 11. And Stevens takes the snap, he'll hand it off, run up the middle, maybe a couple there. And Ooh, looks like there's an injured player out there. Hope, hope he's okay. Well, they're gonna check on the injured player. We're in the second quarter. It's eight nothing Hillers. Let's take a timeout on H Cam. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. A guy. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller volleyball team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name's Sophie. We're Al my gal, and we love H Cam. Hey, I want to be. Uh, camp. We love H Camp, and I volunteer for H Camp TV. And I watch H Camp TV, and I love H Camp TV. And I love H Camp TV. We love H Camp TV. Woo! Off the injury timeout. We're in the second quarter. Hillers up eight to nothing, and the injured player being walked off by his coaches. Certainly. Tough player there. Took a big hit. We certainly hope he's okay. It's a pass over to the near side and brought out of bounds almost at the end zone at about the two or three yard line. That was Seamus Murphy. So Seamus Murphy hauling in a big reception there. And Hiller's offense will continue on. Oh, Wyatt Stevens certainly showing he's not afraid to throw the ball around. And this Hiller's offense, pretty diverse for this level. It is a four receiver set, three to the far side. Stevens out of the gun, takes the snap, and he will pitch it over to his left and a straight shot into the end zone for Will Masterson. Will Masterson with the touchdown run from inside the five. 
And it is 14-0 Hillers. It's about a two or three yard touchdown run there. And now they're gonna go for two once again. Hiller's offense just clicking on all cylinders here today. Besides a couple low snaps and a fumble, it has been near perfection. And it is going to be a keeper by Stevens, and he is able to escape, able to escape out of a pile of defenders and go off tackle into the end zone to make it 16 to nothing Hopkinton. Hiller's offense doing wonders today. And this Mohawks team, I mean, they're big up front. Not an easy defense to get around. But Wyatt Stevens with a nice juke to get out of a pile of defenders and find the end zone. And now we'll get to see the Hiller's defense that has also been playing fantastic today as well. Hopkinton getting their special teams situated. I'll tell you, I'm gonna be looking out for some of these Hillers players on varsity teams to come in the very near future. You look at someone like Wyatt Stevens, they might be looking at him as a freshman. Or Isaiah Curuvilla, Seamus Murphy also, talented athlete. A lot of talent on this Hopkinton team. And it's good to see Hopkinton get a middle, middle school program this season. It's certainly turning into a very big football community. One of the biggest in the area for sure. There is a flag on the kick. Might have been a false start and did the Hillers just recover again. They recovered on the kickoff last time, which allowed them to go on to another touchdown drive. And even if they did recover, it doesn't matter because it was offsides on the Hillers. So they might have them kick it again. And I think they are going to. And this time they'll have to do it from a little further back. It's set to kick it away is the unlisted number 80 who we'll try to get a name on. I believe it was just a number change for someone that's already on the roster. Kick off, take two. Pretty good kick to the far side. It will be picked up and returned from about the 35. And returned for a few yards. Actually picked up, was picked up around the 25 and returned to about the 35. So the ball's going to be marked, looks like at the 37 for the Mohawks. A 16-0 lead for the Hillers here in this second quarter. All the points are second quarter points. You got a beauty of a touchdown drive, resulting in Wyatt Stevens having a big reception on Isaiah Kuru Villab. It's about a 40-yard touchdown, followed by the two-point conversion. And then you had a Will Masterson three-yard run and the two-point conversion on a Stevens keeper to make it 16 to nothing. And that was after the Hillers recovered a fumble on the kickoff return from their first touchdown. So let's see what the Mohawks have here. Trying to respond to a couple of Hillers touchdowns. 
And it looked like a low snap picked up by the quarterback. And he is brought down for a loss. Well, I think one of the toughest lessons to learn at this level is certainly how to snap the football. It's not as easy as it looks. Ball is marked at around the 31. So it was lost three or four. Adam Hart will come out to the huddle. Mills will get set to go. Well, the injured Hiller is still on the bench there, so that's usually a good sign. It usually means that it's not too, too serious. We'll certainly try to keep you updated on the, the injury situation. And it is going to be a run by the Mohawks to the near side for not a whole lot. Making the tackle, Isaiah Curuvilla. Ball carrier was Austin Merkin. That might have even been a small loss. Brings up third down for the Mohawks and a long way to go. Well. I don't know if they uh, have worked on a passing game at all, but if they have, they could certainly use it here. Adam Hart under center, wishbone backfield. Receiver spread out to the far side. And it is going to be a run up the middle. A few yards there. But that will bring up fourth down for the Mohawks. And they will have to punt it away. Hiller's defense continuing to dominate. Back to return, it's Wyatt Stevens. Set to kick it away, it is Austin Merkin. Snap, and Merkin trips up, and he's brought down in the backfield. That is going to be a turnover on downs in very good field position for the Hillers. Will Masterson getting the wrap on Merkin and bring him to the ground. What a great play by Masterson. And it, it was a great job getting the wrap on Merkin, who is substantially bigger than him, so he couldn't get away. Hiller's offense will come back out and have a very good chance to try to add some more points. And we're going to see a switch up of talent out there for Hopkinton. They will keep Stevens out there, but a whole lot of new faces in on the offense. Stevens is going to line up with Cooper Fossbender to his right. Two receivers to either side. Stevens takes it, hands it off to Fossbender, up the middle he goes, and a good gain there. And that'll bring up, is it enough for the first down? Maybe not, so that'll bring up second down. And short. First down marker at the 10 yard line. Hitler started at the 20. Off of the botched uh, punt attempt. Bobble on the snap allowed Will Masterson to make the play and get the Hillers the ball with very good field position. Here goes. Fossbender on the run, and he's brought down for a loss this time. Good awareness by the Millis defense. They were ready for him. Third down for the Hillers. 
First down marker is at the 10. The ball is at about the 14. Hillers huddle up and they're ready to go. Stevens out of the gun with Fossbender to his right. Two receivers either side. Here goes Stevens on the keeper and he is going to sweep to the near side. Has some room and he's brought down at around the five yard line. Enough to move the chains for the Hillers. I'll bring up first and goal for Hopkinton. Stevens showing off the wheels again. See where they mark the football. And it looks like right on the five. Hiller's trying to add on to their 16 to nothing lead. And they have a big opportunity here. First and goal from the five. Stevens going to line it up. Out of the gun with Fossbender to his left. Two receivers either side. Takes the snap, hands it off to Fossbender right up the gut. And can he push his way in? Looks like he was stopped just short. But a positive gain nonetheless. So second and goal from the Hillers, and it looks like they got him at around the, th the three. So it was a gain of a couple by Fossbender. Stevens going to line it up, looks like out of the pistol this time with Fossbender to his right. And he's back to throw, throws to his right, hauled in, and that is going to be a touchdown for the Hillers. Seamus Murphy on the reception. A three-yard touchdown reception from Stevens to Seamus Murphy. And it is 22 to nothing, Hillers. They will attempt two once again. Try to make it an even 24. It is going to be Stevens out of the gun. Fossbender to his right. A pair of receivers uh, each side and Fossbender going to try to push it into the end zone. And it looks like he was stopped short. So the two point conversion is no good. But what a great quarter of play for the Hopkinton Hillers. They lead 22 to nothing. And I believe the second quarter is close to an end, but we will see if the Hillers are able to kick off before the quarter comes to an end. Of course, we don't have a timer to tell us, but the officials keep track of the time on the field, and it looks like they will have enough time to kick it away. So Hiller is set to kick it away once again. Three touchdowns in the second quarter. And it's a good one. It'll sail back to the 20 and be returned up the far side. And that'll be a pretty decent return there up to about 35, 36. And we have an injured Millis player on the field. Certainly tough at this level to see any players get hurt. It is 22 to nothing Hillers with the injured player. We'll take a timeout on H camp. Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. 
The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Continuing on in the second quarter, the injured Millis player being helped off the field, and he seems to be okay walking off under his own power, just a little shook up. He'll shake it off and probably get back into the game at some point. You certainly can't play the sport unless you have some toughness. Andrew Peruzzi, the injured Millis player, certainly showing that he has some toughness. So it is Mohawks football. A 22-0 Hopkinton lead. And it looks like we had a uh, Hiller's timeout after the injury. But we are ready to go. So the Millis offense going to try to get something going. We are nearing the end of this second quarter. So I believe they will have limited time to do so. Being told three minutes. Or in the third. Well, that was a short half. <laughs> okay, we are in the second. <laughs> At least we believe. And it's a... Good run up the far side. Nice gain there for Millis. That's enough to move the chains, but a 10 yard gain on the run. And I believe there was a timeout called to reserve clock by Millis. So there is indeed a timeout because they have to conserve some clock. But that was, I think, probably the biggest gain of the day for Millis on that last play. Ball is marked at the 48 yard line. And I heard 15 seconds. I don't know if that meant for the timeout or how much time is left. I guess we'll find out sooner than later. Well, there's defense back out there ready to go. Hopkinton varsity team practicing behind us and also getting a look for my first time at the beautiful turf baseball diamond out there at the new fields. And it is certainly looking very good. And I'm sure the uh, players are gonna be very excited to play on it. But I'm sure it'll take some getting used to because playing baseball on turf is a whole lot different than grass. Certainly a lot more of a bounce on the turf. But the field project coming around very nicely and looking beautiful. So I don't think we'll have too many postponed games for a softball or baseball this spring. That's when the new field should be ready to go by the spring sports season as the Mohawks offense ready to go. First and 10 from the 48. Low snap and it is Covered up and brought down for a loss. I want to say that was Jason Pacholi who was able to get through and bring down the quarterback. And that's going to do it for the second quarter. At the half, it's the Hopkinton Hillers 22, the Millis Mohawks nothing. Second half coming up in just a bit right here on HKM. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance.
In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness, and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org. We are ready for the second half between the Hopkinton Hillers and the Millis Mohawks. It is Hopkinton Middle School football on HCAM. Tom Nappy on the call, John Ritz on camera. A 22 to nothing lead for the Hillers. And Millis kicks off to start the second half. It has been a very impressive performance to say the least by the Hillers today. It's gonna be Wyatt Stevens on the return. Here he goes, look out. He has some jets up the far side, eludes one tackle and another, and he's brought down at around the 35. A big return by Wyatt Stevens, who is showing today that he could do it all. Wyatt Stevens will be at the high school level next year, and I guess the only question is, is he gonna be on the freshman team, the JV team, the varsity team? We'll just have to wait and see as the ball is marked at the 34. Very good field position for the Hillers, and as usual at this level in the second half, we'll see a switch up of talent on the field. In there at quarterback for the Hillers, it's Sam Pantera. Sam Pantera, the new quarterback, out of the gun with a back to his left, he'll pitch it. And it's going to be a run to the near side. And a nice run there by Devin Canty. He had tacklers right in front of him, but pushed one of them off and kept going. And correction, that was actually Cooper Fossbender. But he gave a good stiff arm there on that run. So it was loss of a couple. So it brings up second and 12 from the 35 for the Hillers. Nice comfortable 22 to nothing lead, so you don't have to try anything crazy. Hillers, I think are gonna probably run the ball a whole lot here in this half. Sam Pantera in at quarterback. Fossbender to his left, two receivers on either side. Here goes Fossbender, and he's brought down in the backfield for a loss. That's going to be about a five-yard loss. Nice job by the Millis defense, and getting the wrap and making the tackle there was Jack Scary. So that brings up third down. First down marker is at the 23. Third and 17. Pantero Fossbender to his left, takes the snap. He's gonna throw here and it was a beauty to the slot man. And he was not able to get enough for the first down. Seamus Murphy on the reception. But a pretty good throw there by Fossbender. Murphy. Was lined up in the right slot, just ran a curl, and Paul Spender was able to hit him. It brings up fourth down for the Hillers. And they did mark him back some as the wrap was a little bit early there. Ball is marked at the 35. And we'll see what the Hillers do here. They will punted away it looks like and they're gonna try to pin Millis back and it's a pretty good punt it's gonna land inside the 10 and then it's going to be downed at about the two so a beauty of a punt and the Mohawks will have to work from deep in their own territory so Mohawks offense comes back out to the field They'll have the ball from their own three yard line. Why 
I'd say the only thing the Hillers haven't done yet in this game is get a safety, so we'll see if they can do that right here. And they're at quarterback. Looks like Adam Hart for Millis. It's going to be a wishbone backfield with a receiver to the near side. And he will go to the right back. And it's going to be a good run here. And getting some good yardage on the run there was Shea Ferentino. Ball is marked at the eight. So it was a gain of about five. I'll bring up second down for the Mohawks. Certainly some speed on both these rosters. It's going to be Hart lined up with the back to either side. And receiver spread out to the far side. It's Jack Scarry to the far side. Getting the call. Here's Ferentino with a nice takedown. And slipping through to bring him down was Kuru Villa. Isaiah Kuru Villa, seventh grader. Look out for him. He's made some nice tackles today. Third down for the Mohawks, and they got about eight to go. First season of Hopkinton Middle School football has certainly been an overwhelming success so far. The kids out there just having a blast. A lot of fun to watch. It's going to be a wishbone backfield here. And a handoff to Tarantino, who's going to push his way forward. A nice job staying on his feet. Was wrapped almost immediately, but able to push the defenders forward. And that was certainly a great effort. It does bring up fourth down for the Mohawks, so they're going to punt it away here. Ball marked at around the eight. Certainly not much of a choice in this situation. Wyatt Stevens is back to return. And if I'm Millis, I'm trying to keep it away from him. Austin Merkin on the punt. If I'm Millis, I put this one out of bounds. And he was just able to get it away. And it gets by Stevens. And he will have to backpedal to the 40 to pick it up, and he does. So there will be a return. Here he comes up the middle, past the 30, the 20, at the 15, the 10, the 5, and the touchdown. Touchdown, Hillers. Wyatt Stevens taking it to the house. A 40-yard kickoff re uh, punt return. And that'll make it 28 to nothing, Hillers. And we'll see a two-point conversion attempt here. Well, when you don't have uh, a kicker, you, you go for two. So that's what the Hillers are going to do here. Every now and then, though, they do try to kick it. But I think they're going to continue with uh, going for the two-point conversion. So the Hillers are going to line up their offense, try to make it an even 30. Sam Pantera in at quarterback. Hands it off, run up the middle by a Fossbender, stops short. So the score remains, Hillers 28, Millis nothing. 
There was a kick off, uh, punt return for a touchdown. And it was none other than Wyatt Stevens, who one way or the other has been involved with uh, every touchdown today for the Hillers. So both teams will get their kickoff teams ready and this time Hillers will kick off to Millis. We'll give you some on the field scenes here during these pauses in the action. Great crowd on hand today. Tom Nappy, John Ritz, happy to be with you for Hopkinton Middle School football. Well, if you look at the talent at this level, I don't think the uh, Hillers football program is going to be stopped from being towards the top of the TVL anytime soon. So the Hillers ready to kick it away. Let's it rip. Back to the 25 it goes. Here's the return. And a beauty of a job on special teams by the Hillers. Firing upfield to make the stop was Tyler Mulvaney and Isaiah Kuruvilla. So Mohawks send their offense back out. And they had a couple good runs on their last few drives. So they're going to try to see if they could dial. Uh, up some offense here, trailing 28 to nothing. We're in the third quarter of action here. Hillers scored all their first half points in the second quarter. And they have put another six on the scoreboard so far in this one. Adam Hart remains in at quarterback for the Mohawks. They are starting from their own 27. Wishbone backfield once again. Jack Scary spread out to the far side. And it is going to be a keeper here. Couldn't find anywhere to go with it, so Adam Hart takes off. And he turns it into a pretty good gain. Well, good awareness by Hart, was standing in the pocket. Great protection by the offensive line. Didn't see anywhere to go with the ball. It was man defense, so he took care of business and picked up some yardage. Ball is marked at the 32. So it is second and five for Millis. Hiller's defense has done a terrific job in this game, pitching a shutout up to this point. Adam Hart going to line it up with a back to either side. Jack Scarry spread out to the far side. Back to his left is Merkin, and here he goes. He's going to throw here up the middle, and it is intercepted. A beauty of an interception by Robert. Lisher and Lisher is going to keep on running up the near side. Delivers a huge hit there to the attempted tackler and brings it all the way to about the six or seven before being brought out of bounds. A beauty of an interception by Robert Lisher and he takes it up the near side for a beauty of a return after the interception. Hiller's offense will come back out with very good field position. And his teammates giving him big congratulations there. That was a great defensive play. He just kind of jumped right to at the receiver. That ball was being thrown at, pushed the receiver out of the way, and picked it off. 
That'll look like a Malcolm Butler interception against the Seahawks in the Super Bowl. Obviously that one was uh, in the end zone, but that was the exact kind of play that Robert Lischer was able to pull off there. Box out the receiver by knocking him out of the way and pick it off. Great read on the quarterback. Sam Pantera takes the snap, hands it off, run up the middle and stop just short. Good run there nonetheless. That was Fossbender once again. Brings up second down for Hopkinton. And about two to go. Second and goal from the two. Well, if you're the Hillers here with the way Fossbender has run in these short yardage situations, I think you just give him the ball and let him ram it up the middle. Pantera with Fossbender to his left, two receivers either side. What's the play call here? It's Fossbender, there he goes, up the middle, and I think he has enough. Or was his knee brought down short? They're gonna mark him just short by a hair. The knee did come down short of the goal line, but it was at least enough for a positive gain. So the Hillers, Right around the one yard line. Third and goal from the one. Will they go Fossbender again? I say why not. Same formation with the two receivers either side. It's Fossbender again, there he goes this time. He's going to try to take it to the outside. He's brought down for a loss. Great stop by the Mills defense. Well, he tried to find an opening in the right side flats and ended up being a loss. But when you're at the one, you just got to take that right up the middle. Very good tackle, however. Made by the defender, and here we go. Third, uh, fourth and goal from the four, it is fourth and goal. And Fossbender gets the call here, and he stopped for a loss. Brought down at around the eight or nine. And that is going to wrap up the third quarter. So at the end of three, it's the Hillers 28, and Millis nothing. We'll take a timeout. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Are you worried about letting your child take the wheel? Maybe you should also be worried about what you're doing behind the wheel. Have you ever sent a quick text just this once? Well, that might turn into a catastrophic accident. Monkey see what monkey do. If you do it, why wouldn't your child? In a child's brain, almost all things their parents do, they can do too. 78% of teen drivers' surveys text and drive. 59% said their parents do it too. Stop texting and driving, because if you do it, your child will too. Start of the fourth quarter, the Mohawks have the ball after a good job by the goal line defense for Millis. Putting a stop to the Hillers inside the five. Mohawks have the ball here from their own 10. And we have flags off the snap here. And I believe the ref pointed in Hopkinton's direction, which means Millis is gonna move up five. So I believe we had a neutral zone infraction there by Hopkinton. So that'll push Millis up five to the 15 they go and it's first and five. Hopkinton up 28 to nothing as we start this fourth quarter. Tom Nappy, John Ritz, happy to be with you here at Field One for this middle school football matchup. Adam Hart, the Millis quarterback.
Here comes the Mohawks. He's going to throw to his right, and it's hauled in. And that might be enough for the first down. We'll see who the ref marks him. That was caught by TJ Daniels. And that does indeed move the chains for Millis. Up to the 20 they go. Both teams getting uh, their whole roster in this game pretty much. That's certainly what you want at this level, experience. But some good athletes on the field today. Certainly some fun football. Miller's varsity team continuing their practice behind us. Getting set for Holliston this Friday. Of course, you can catch all the home games on EHCAM, but EHCAM will also be at Holliston this Friday for that game as well. And we are ready to go. And it's going to be a pass here by Scary. And up the far side he goes. It's hauled in at around the 35 and taken up for a huge gain into Hiller's territory. Brought down at the Hiller's 40 is Austin Merkin. And a little deception there as they uh, had the running back pass it. Looked like a direct snap to the running back, and he threw it up field. I believe it was actually Shea Ferentino that might have threw that one. In any case, it is a first and 10 for the Mohawks. Well, sometimes when uh, the offense is having a tough time, you gotta dial up something deep down in the playbook, and that's what Millis did there. Ball is marked at the 37. And that was the biggest play the Millis offense has had this afternoon. Under center is Adam Hart. And a wishbone backfield. And it's going to be Hart over to Ferentino. Here comes the speedy Ferentino as he sets the edge and he is brought out of bounds. And a big gain all the way up to about the 15. Great sweep there and some excellent blocking by Millis up front. Ball is placed at the 15. Another first down for the Mohawks. Millis starting to find some life here offensively. Couple of big plays in a row. And they have momentum as they try to end this Hiller's shutout. Out of the gun, it's Hart. Ferentino to his right, and he also has Merkin to his left. Merkin now moves over to the left slot. He'll hand it off to Ferentino. Here goes Ferentino again. And this time he's brought down in the backfield. On the tackle, taking him down. That was Tyler Mulvaney. And that was a great job by Mulvaney. Just able to shoot right in and drag Ferentino down. And that'll bring up second down for the Mohawks and about 13 to go. Ball marked at the 18 yard line. I'll make that about 12 to go, excuse me. Mohawks huddle up, talk things over. Let's see what they dial up here. Hart out of the gun, back to either side. Receiver to the near side is Jack Scary. And it was a great fake there. Adam Hart faked the handoff, had the defense fooled, and he took it inside the 15. 
Nice pick up there, but a good job by the uh, Hillers defense. A couple of them, uh, including myself actually, were fooled by who got the ball there. But then uh, they were quick to realize it and get to the far side to bring down Hart before any damage could be done. So it is now third down and about eight to go for Millis. Ball is marked at about the 14. Millis digging down in that playbook on this drive. And it has turned into some great gains here for the Mohawks. So let's see what they have in store now. They're going to come out of the eye formation. And it's a handoff to the fullback. And he's going to push forward for a couple. But a great job by the Hillers defense there. On the carry. That time. That was, looks like an unlisted player. It is fourth down for Millis. So they will need to get to at least the six yard line here to keep this drive going. We'll see if they try a pass. Hiller's defense has played an unbelievable game so far today. They certainly deserve a lot of credit. They've made some great stops. And they haven't given up much at all. And it's a pitch out of the eye. Here comes Ferentino on the sweep to the near side. And he's brought out of bounds at around the 12-13. Another great Hiller's defensive stop. And it's a turnover on downs. The Hillers have it. Hopkinton will bring their offense back out. And a job well done once again by the Hillers defense. And I know the offense has been impressive today, but if you're going to pick uh, some players of the games, I think you got to give it to the Hillers defense. Keeping the shutout going. Now I think it's going to be clock wasting time for Hopkinton. Sam Panther is going to come back out as quarterback, seventh grader. And I'd expect a whole lot of uh, different looking runs here by the Hillers. Panthera out of the gun with a back to his left, two receivers either side, it's a pitch. And here comes Fossbender, and Fossbender is going to be brought down right around the line of scrimmage. So not much of a gain there. Second and 10. Hiller is going to take their time here to let the clock run a bit. And that's certainly another uh, part of the game that the kids at this age are going to learn is clock management. Sam Pantera back out to the huddle. Hiller is ready to go. Pantera with Fossbender to his left, two receivers either side. And he's going to pitch it, but fakes it, keeps it, brought down for a loss. Good read by the Millis defense. And a nice play there by the Mohawks, making the tackle. That was Jack Scary. So Scary brings down Pantera. He's been all over the field today. He's had a really nice game. 
And I heard two minutes. I believe it was from one of the officials talking about how much time is left. So this game uh, certainly wrapping up nicely for the Hillers, but they'll have to run a few plays here. Pantera and the Hillers offense ready to go. We have a new running back in the game as Jack Herlihy in the game for the Hillers. He's lined up to the left of Panther. He's going to get the call here, and he is going to push up the middle to about the 15. Good run. And Millis took another timeout. And correction on that last carry, that was Devin Canty. Brings up fourth down for the Hillers. Millis takes a timeout. It's a 28 nothing game. Timeout on the field, we'll take one too. You're tuned in to Hopkinton Middle School Football on H-Camp. My name is Kurt. My name is Nina. A gun. I'm Haley. Hi, hi, Davis. Jake. We're the Hiller Volleyball Team. My name is Emma. My name is May. My name is Shelby. My name is Sophie. We're Al my gal and we love H-Camp. Hey, I want to be. Uh, camp. We love H-Camp. And I volunteer for H-Camp TV. And I watch H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. And I love H-Camp TV. We love H-Camp TV. Woo! Fourth down for the Hillers. They'll be forced to punt it away. Off the Millis timeout, Isaiah Curvilla set to punt it away. Millis trying to end the shutout the Hillers defense has going, and they'll have another opportunity at it. High snap into the end zone, picks it up, and he is going to run it out. Here he goes up the far side, look out. And Caravilla able to run it up the far side to at least avoid the safety, but in doing that, Millis will have very good field position. Well, you want to keep the shutout going, so <laughs> you're running out of the end zone. In any other situation, you just take the safety when you're up big, when you're up uh, by 28 points like the Hillers are. But when you got a shutout going, you try to keep it. We'll see if the Hillers' defense can do so. Mohawks offense was able to find some big yardage plays on the last couple drives, but they have not found the end zone yet. Can the Hillers defense keep the shutout going? 28 nothing lead, it's been a very good all around game for this Hillers team. Mohawks are set to go. It's going to be Adam Hart lining up with a back to either side. Stacked receivers on the near side. And someone jumped. I think this is gonna be on Millis. And it is. That one hurts. And he'll push Millis back five. False start. Good job by the left side of the Hillers defense. Making it known that someone jumped. Ball's marked back at the 19. So it is first and 15 to go for the Mohawks. And it is going to be a handoff. Here comes Ferentino, and Ferentino gonna take it to the near side, has some room, and he's brought out of bounds right around the one. What a great run by Ferentino. 
And he wanted the touchdown, but he had an excellent run there. And that was an 18-yard gain by Farentino. And now the Mohawks have a great ch chance to end the shutout. Hillers are going to get the W, but the last thing you want to do is uh, go home with a loss and being shut out. Mohawks set to go. And it's going to be a run up the gut. Touchdown, Millis. Taking it into the end zone is Bryson Mustard. One yard touchdown run makes it 28 to 6. And I'd imagine it'll go for two. Good run up the gut. Well, the Hillers defense certainly played fantastic all game long, so to give up a touchdown late in the fourth quarter, certainly can't hang your heads up, uh, hang your heads down about that. We'll see what Millis styles up here for the two point conversion attempt. And then uh, you try the onside kick, try to get the ball back. Miracles happen. I'll tell you, all these kids out there, certainly uh, some great athletes. Great game played between these two teams today. And the two-point conversion is stopped. Good job by the Hillers defense. Once again, coming up big. Score remains 28-6. to Millis will kick off. Talk to their teams. Actually, that is the end of the game. So the game comes to an end. So Millis able to avoid the shutout. A great job by the Hopkins and Hillers. The defense, absolutely fantastic. The offense, absolutely fantastic. And Wyatt Stevens, what a game he had involved in all the touchdowns and also uh, made some nice defensive plays as well. But all around, great game played by both of these teams. The final score for the final time, the Hopkins and Hillers take down the Millis Mohawks by a final score of 28 to 6. For John Ritz on camera, I'm Tom Nappy. We thank you for watching Hopkinton Middle School Football on HCAM. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll talk to you again soon.